and gentlemen, it is uh, 7 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order tonight. I'll ask uh, everyone to stand. We'll have the uh, Reverend Perry lead us in prayer, and then we will do our Pledge of Allegiance immediately following. Mr. Perry? Okay. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for uh, this uh, day. This is the day that uh, you have made for us and for the rest of the day as well as tonight. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Father, we thank you for all that you do for uh, our great United States of America, for our city, for our country. And Father, we ask your blessings upon this meeting as we gather together to conduct business to make this first city of Alma better. Bless everyone who has taken time out of the busy schedule uh, to come out tonight. And as always, uh, may this meeting be conducted it decently and in order. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 you please face the flag and salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Wayne, will you do roll call, please? Sandra. Here. James. Here. John. Here. 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 Thank you. On your agenda, we have the minutes from our uh, last council meeting or June council meeting everyone should have a copy I would entertain a motion to waive the reading of the minutes and if there are no questions adopt as written we have a motion by Mr. Ware do we have a second 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 by James McGee On committee reports, we have none. Uh, citizens form, uh, nobody has turned in anything. Um, Mr. Wilson? I'd like to wait until afterwards, uh, later in the meeting, answer the memorial to have comments. Okay. If, uh, a motion to amend the agenda and move the citizens form down to the uh, right before department head reports. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. In old business, there was a uh, final plat for the project on Column Lane. It was uh, included in your pack. Everyone should have had a, uh, a diagram of uh, that project. I think you just turned it, Gary. Sean, we just need to. There you go. And it just needs to be. To accept public spaces. Yes. I move to accept the public spaces in column lane three, final plan. Second. Second by Mr. Wakefield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, at this time, I would also like to. Uh, uh, the council to uh, entertain a motion to amend the agenda removing item D resolution 2020-10 D as in David we have a motion for Mr. Ware do we have a second a second for Mr. Wakefield Can give a quick explanation on that um, you, you want me to? Well, in case some folks may not have a gender. Sure. So the uh, resolution 2020-10, that was a resolution that we were going to discuss this evening uh, that dealt with mask uh, in public. Since the governor passed a, uh, uh, a directive on that very issue today, there is no need for this resolution or any need to discuss it. Any 
Next piece of business is uh, resolution 20-07. We need a motion to bring that to the table. So moved. Gonna have to give me just a second so I can get to it. All right. Can't lick your fingers. You can't turn the pages. Uh, resolution 2020-7. This is a, a resolution uh, where I am asking you to uh, um, approve this so that we can move forward with the. Um, uh, oh, hang on one sec. I got ahead of myself. This is one half cent sales tax resolution 2020-7. This is. Um, just showing that we are supporting the uh, the one half cent sales tax, the state sales tax that is due to sunset in 2023. There's going to be a, a question on the uh, the ballot this year in November uh, to do away with the sunset and extend that tax, make it a permanent tax. Um, this is a uh, um, a tax that's divided. Seventy percent of that goes to the state 15% goes to counties and 15% is divided and distributed among cities uh, for us if we if this tax was to go away we would lose a significant amount of money in our street department about half of our operating budget with this I move to adopt resolution 2020-7 a resolution by the city of Alma, Arkansas supporting the house joint resolution 1018 of 2019 Second. Second by Mr. McGee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Now we need a motion to bring resolution 2020-8 to the table, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution number 2020-8, this is a resolution expressing the willingness of the City of Alma to partner with the Arkansas Department of Transportation for the following projects which are listed uh, on your resolution. So what this is, and everyone has a diagram that was put in front of them, um, the stretch of road that continues from Fayetteville Avenue and runs to 162 or what is known as Marshall Woolley Drive. The Canter Bridge has been in discussion for a while to be replaced. The problem was um, they did not uh, have planned on putting sidewalks on that bridge. And as we try to continue out our, uh, our bike and pedestrian plan, that was going to be a major obstacle for us. And that would cost us, um, again, well over a million dollars to be able to put curb gutter sidewalks and then a pedestrian bridge separate from the Canter Bridge. So as you know, there, uh, there had been a proposal for, uh, for them to bring the entire stretch of 64B up to city standards with curb gutter and sidewalks. Um, they estimated the cost to be somewhere around eight and a half million dollars and they refused. And this had really kind of morphed back into, they were just gonna put the bridge up and, and they were, um, they were going to be done with it. But we, uh, myself, Mr. Yardley, we started working on um, some of those relationships with the, the uh, Arkansas Department of Transportation again. Uh, we started uh, getting some more dialogue and, uh, and now then what I propose to you is that um, what this resolution states is that the state will now bring that section of road from Fayetteville to 162 that includes the Canter Bridge with curb gutter, sidewalks on both sides of the road, and a, uh, the, a new bridge that also has a pedestrian crossing across that bridge. And they are committed to helping us with the drainage problem, which is uh, right there around the, where we're gonna be building the new Cristello Park. Um, water likes to stand there. It ends up being a moat uh, a lot of times during the course of the year. And, uh, and they are committed to helping us with that, uh, with that issue, which could again very easily run into a substantial amount of money. And so they will do that. Um, and, and what we will do in return is then take 64B into our inventory. 
Um, and by doing that, that also now gives us control of the right of way around the park areas and, and around, uh, uh, well, just the park area right now. And uh, which is gonna mean a lot moving on down the road because we all know sometimes what it's like having to try to uh, get permission to work in a right of way for RDOT. Are there any questions? I would entertain a motion to. Okay, we have a motion for Mr. Wakefield, a second for Mr. Perry. All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. All right. This is uh, next up the one that I was excited about. Uh, need a motion to bring resolution 2020-9 to the table, please. So moved. Please read it in its entirety. Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Resolution number 2020-9, a resolution naming the Alma Tennis Courts, the Tony McMurray Memorial Courts. Whereas Tony spent his entire teaching career with the Alma School District, which means he has better taste than his brother. Whereas Tony served as a social study department chairman, and whereas Tony was a regional coordinator for the National History Day, and whereas Tony was the director of the Alma School District, FCA, and whereas Tony was known as the voice of the Alma Airedales, and whereas Tony was the high school boys and girls tennis coach for 27 years. And whereas most importantly, Tony McMurray invested daily in the lives of the young people in Alma. And whereas the relationships that Tony built and the conversations that he had with Alma students and players will carry on forever. This is uh, something that has been in the works for quite some time now. Um, and this isn't just a resolution that names the courts. We're also in the process of uh, resurfacing and redoing the courts and uh, putting up new nets, new windscreens that will bear his name and a plaque that we will install uh, for the courts. And before I continue reading this, I would ask Coach Locke, do you want to speak? I ask you to step up to the mic. I would just like to say on behalf of the Alma School District that it is an honor, been an honor to be able to work with uh, Mayor Martin and the, the city of Alma on this project, uh, the ability to resurface the courts. Uh, to do all the things that we're going to do to the to the facility with the work of the city for the school district with what we do uh, with our tennis team here and is also with what happens with the community having a, a, a community-wide tennis court uh, as mayor martin said you know tony was a 35-year teacher here and uh you know in my short time here just a head coach number one i knew tony as a friend but i also worked with him on in the coaching circuit uh, knew him as a teacher, knew him as leader as our FCA. I had the ability to, to travel with him to numerous Razorback games with our FCA group and things like that. And I think it's just an honor to be able to commemorate uh, the memory of Tony by renaming these courts and putting the memory name on these courts where it will live forever uh, in honor of the students that he was with and, and the teachers he's, te he's taught with and the athletes that he's coached. So I think it's a very nice gesture uh, and it's great to get, to get, that this is going to be the, the Tony McMurray Memorial Tennis Courts. Move to adopt resolution 2020-9. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Twenty twenty dash nine has passed, and I would also uh, give this uh, give this time to if there was anybody else that would like to say anything, um, speak about the courts, T Mac. So Mr. Rick Murray was obviously a social studies teacher in high school and tennis coach uh, back in the late nineties, and um, when this first came up, you know we we live 
in an environment now where we have to be cautious naming things after anyone, um, but I, I feel comfortable um, that the stature that Mr. McMurray had in this community will, will live forever. And I'm going to finish reading the rest of this resolution right quick. Since it's been passed, now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of Alma, Arkansas that the Alma Tennis Courts located at 114 East Column Lane will now and forever be named and known as the Tony McMurray Memorial Tennis Courts. And as soon as we have a, the official resolution uh, signed and sealed, we will uh, pass that on uh, so that you will have a, a one for yourself as well. All right, and thank you. Um, next on the agenda is uh, or Ordinance 2020-6. Need a motion to bring it to the table. So moved. Second by Ms. Kilpatrick. All in favor? Aye. Oh, roll call. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. Entertain a motion to uh, waive the three readings and read by title only. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Ware. Sandra. Yes. James. Yes. Don. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 2020-6, an ordinance to waive competitive bidding for emergency repair of the city water, our wastewater collection system. Uh, this is now open for discussion. Uh, Mr. Yardley, is there anything that you want to say? Open for discussion. Questions? Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Ware. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Gary. Yes. John. Yes. James. Yes. 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 Ordinance number 2020-6 has passed. Um, there was, yes, there is an emergency clause. Uh, this action being necessary for the prevention of the public peace, health, and safety. The emergency is therefore declared to exist and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after the passage of this approval. I move to adopt emergency calls. We have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Wakefield. Sandra. Yes. James. Yes. John. Yes. Gary. Yes. Ted. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Thank you. Next on the agenda is ordinance number 2020-07. Entertain a motion to bring this to the table. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Perry. Sandra. Yes. James. Yes. John. Yes. Gary. Yes. Ed. Yes. 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 A motion to uh, read this by title only and waive the three readings. So moved. Second. Second. Yes. Ed. Yes. John. Yes. James. Yes. Thank you. Ordinance number 2020-07. This is an ordinance replacing Alma Ordinance number 81-15. This is the uh, ordinance that deals with the uh, rules and regulations of our parks, of our city parks. We um, 
the one thing that I wanted to point out that was a little bit different than what was discussed in the study session is section one. And uh, after speaking with the city attorney, we were afraid that if we started trying to list the uh, hours of each individual park, because there will be some that will be different than others, um, it would. Uh, you mean section three, correct? You said section one. Oh, section three. That's correct. I'm sorry. Um, when I talked to it, it was section one. He changed it. We, uh, but section three, the hours of operations. Instead of listing those for each facility since they'll be different we were afraid it would muddy up the the ordinance so uh, what this is asking and, and and saying is that those hours will be set by a mayor's proclamation for each facility um, of course that will always be on the blessing of the council and after discussion with you um, but and doing it this way also if we ever have to change something then uh, we can uh, we can do that without having to amend the ordinance this is something that um, uh, we're needing to do uh, for uh, a lot of different reasons we need to get some signs made up we've we've had signs that were that are faded and you can't see we have signs that say park hours are different than what the ordinance actually says right now um, and we're going to use this as a tool to start um, um, trying to uh, curtail some of the vandalism that we are experiencing so it'll give us a mechanism. So you mentioned signage. I, I guess I would make a motion to amend <clears throat> section three to read the hours of operations for public spaces as defined in this ordinance shall be set by mayor's proclamation and posted publicly at the entrance of each park. Yeah, that, that is subject to hours. So sure. Where there's no yeah. question. Okay. I think, I guess, would that help? Where's Jeff? Would that help you, Jeff? Yeah, and that was the intent anyway, was to be able to get the hours posted in front of, uh, you know, at each, each location. Uh, Mayor? Yes, sir? On number seven, should that uh, refer to the police officers? I mean, you know, that shouldn't exclude the police officers or law enforcement on number seven. Well, that, that's going to be a Sean question, but I, I don't believe that that does, um, you know. No firearms permitted in. No firearms at all, so that excludes the police. We can. I can add that if you want that clarification. I think it would. It would. Uh, I don't think it'd be an issue. But if you, if you want that clarification, we can do well, that. I just would you want that, just, that? You know, it's pretty straight. None mm -hmm. whatsoever. I, I did not. That's what I was asking. Should we add? That's that. That's really up to y'all. So at this point, yeah. So in theory, if you had a law enforcement officer from another jurisdiction, it, it could be cause a gray area or, or question. But it wouldn't. It wouldn't apply to your on-duty officers who are out working. Hmm. It, yeah, but, yeah. Okay. Should we vote on that first? Yeah. We need it. John, John made a motion to amend section three. The hours of operations for public spaces as defined in this ordinance shall be set by mayor's proclamation and posted at each location. I'll second John's motion. The issue is the astronomy Same. part. Yeah. John? Yes. 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 And then the uh, Mr. McGee brought up section number seven that says no firearms. Um, uh, James, are you? Do you want to make a motion to change or? I, I think it ought to exclude, you know, off duty. Officers. I mean, it ought to, uh, uh, that would include off duty officers, but it should specifically say any law officer. You know, so I don't know how you would want to. So it before should. you make that motion, I. I think it's important, maybe, and maybe the answer is to table this and take it up in a study session, but uh, at the moment, I do not believe that we prohibit concealed carry holders from from carrying in a in a city facility. That, that would potentially have implications. And so this is, this is stepping beyond any, what we currently allow in other public spaces in the city. Um, so 
I I'm, uh, so I would make a motion to, to table ordinance 2020-7 for further discussion. I second. Because this would have, I think this, you see what I'm saying? This is this is stepping beyond what we're currently allowing in other No, and that's, and that's the reason we wanted to do this because this language that's here right now was actually in the current ordinance. So that's why we're doing this. If we're gonna update it, let's make sure that we, we get so, it right. So, so currently I believe Arkansas concealed carry license holders can carry in public spaces uh, unless prohibited by ordinance. And then there's, I think there's some, also some distinction on whether you have the enhanced concealed carry as well. Correct. Yes, 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 yes. So let's, let's talk about this some more. Okay. So we have a second to table. Second. James, you have table? Sorry. Okay. I didn't mean to talk about. Yes. James. Yeah. John. Yes. Gary. Yes. 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 All right. Uh, next on the agenda is going to be City Hall personnel. At this point, Put up. go ahead. Maybe make a motion to agend, uh, amend the agenda once more um, and move public comment of head of, head of item G. Uh, the reason being, I, I expect uh, probably an executive session for item G City Hall personnel, so that would give anyone a chance to speak while the, everyone is here. Because I assume uh, once everyone has to leave for. Uh, the executive session um, some may not come back okay we have a second to amend the agenda one more time and go ahead and go to citizens forum we have a second uh, all right citizens forum comment on but today's events has changed that um, so we now have a mandate from the state concerning mask wearing they talk of uh, enforcement of wearing the mask so I'm interested in the city's plan on enforcement of non-compliance on the mask I'm asking the city leaders what is your intent? Have you thought about this? I know you, you've known that this has been coming. You've tried to institute it. You're going to plan on doing it yourself. What is your plan for enforcement? Who are you going to be pressuring? You know, for, uh, for me, I didn't see this one coming from the governor. Um, you know, I didn't. And, and honestly, I haven't even had a chance to read through it yet. Um, I, I have no idea what it says. I didn't see the governor today. I didn't haven't seen the directive that he's put out. Um, okay. I, well, well it, it's here now, and plans are made in advance. So, do y'all have a plan? Each individual well, here, the leader of this, one of the leaders of this city, representing us, the citizens which I don't recall any conversation from any of you other than yesterday from the mayor about any of this. Representation, where is it? Y'all sitting up here doing what? Are we gonna get run over? Are you planning on protecting us? Your duties as city council, leaders of this community is what? In your mind, what is it? Are you gonna stand up for us? Or are you just gonna sit up here and do nothing? Because there's going to be more than me who declined to wear a mask. So are we going to get the hard end from law enforcement or what? I mean, I, I can tell you right now, there's going to be plenty of people who peaceably resist, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And there's lines that get drawn and people cross lines. And we don't always know where people's lines are. But as leaders of this community, you better be thinking. So, but none of you have given an answer whatsoever of my question. Do any of you, have you ever, have you thought about it, any of you? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll just touch on this. I know, you know, we, we discussed a resolution in, in lieu of an ordinance. Um, and 
I brought that forward because I, I didn't feel like our community was was ready uh, for the ordinance that the municipal league proposed. Uh, now that took me by surprise because I did not see, I did not anticipate the governor's actions today with the mandate that begins on, on July 20th. And I saw the bullet points of that. And I think the first offense is a, a warning, a verbal warning or written warning. Uh, anyway, we can get into that. But uh, being that that just came down today from the state, you know, I've, I'd be happy to add this to our next study session uh, to, to take up you know, how, how our city and how our law enforcement uh, plans to enforce this. Um, you know, it's like any other law, I think that, you know, we only have so much manpower, so, you know, there are ordinances that we have that aren't enforced um, for one reason or another. Um, but I do think that it, it's worthy of, of taking this up for further discussion on how, how our city plans to to respond to this okay, that's right because this is our town this is not little rock this is not the rest of the state we govern our city so let's all remember that and let's step up and do that so wayne could you add that to our agenda for the next study session yes, sir. Uh, and that would be in addition to the to the uh ordinance 2020-7 yes Yeah, we, um, you know, again, that, that, that took me by surprise today. And, and uh, after I found out, and I didn't find out until like four o'clock this afternoon, I, I hollered at, at Chief Pointer and, and, uh, and told him we were gonna sit down with our city attorney and uh, start discussions on what this means. Haven't even had a chance to look at it yet. So um, we, we, we really don't know anything about it. And, uh, and, and we won't, we can't make any decisions until we actually get the directive from the, from the governor clarification on everything. All right. So we tend to plan on August 3rd, study session, that kind of August 3rd, yes, six o'clock. Should we have that in public probably? If we can use this setting, is that possible? Um, I don't know why it couldn't be. I mean, you know. Maybe turn the air conditioner down a little bit. <laughs> They've been on all day, too. They got on. Okay. Well, well, we'll work on getting the study session set up for August 3rd. Um, all right. So, uh, anybody else on Citizens Forum? Uh, when was the study session set up? August 3rd at August 6 p.m. Here, uh, we're, that's what we're going to try to do. It may be booked, so we've got to look and see. I, I don't have the the booking for this place, okay. um, so I, I, that's the only reason I'm hesitating. I don't want to step out there and, and say yes, and then come to find out this is booked, and then you're going to be mad at me because I, I lied. <laughs> So we, uh, but this, that, that is what we, our intent is, August 3rd here. All right. None other? All right. Uh, next on the agenda then is going to be city hall personnel. Uh, at, uh, so I, uh, uh, unless somebody, we need to discuss anything. I will probably would like to make a motion to uh, enter executive session um, to discuss personnel issues uh, with uh, each of the uh, folks that are resigning from the mayor's office individually uh, before we come back as a group. Is there another room? Um, there is not another room in no, here. Can we use the kitchen? Is it? No. Uh, you can still hear everything that's going on in here. So. Uh, all right. This time we'll have to ask. We're going to go to an executive session. Everyone will have to uh, leave. Do you want uh, Wayne and, and Destiny at the same time or individually? I think we have separate cameras. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. So, yeah, one. Uh, you can, you can, you can.
can answer immediate supervisor and the head is agent. Say that again, I'm sorry.
when we need a motion, come out of the executive session. I usually do it. It's not strictly required, but make sure these are on the record. Okay. Make sure Anderson's good. Anderson, you good? Um, all right. So um, a motion was uh, made to come out of executive session by um, uh, Mr. Perry, seconded by Mr. Wakefield. What was the time? 9.08. 9 9 You got that point? Good. Uh, Mr. Wakefield, seconded. All right. Now then we will continue. We have our department head reports and we will uh, begin with Chief Wakefield. During the month of June, we have one structure fire, one call of gas leak, and two for vehicle accidents slash vehicle fires. Um, as y'all can probably see very well, as we tried to do our annual burn of the Lake Alma Dam prior to the fireworks display, but the rain started just about the time we lit it, so we didn't do a very good job burning it this year uh, I would I, I would like to ask your permission for something um, traditionally all of our fire all of our fire gear that we wear called turnout gear coats pants boots uh, gloves helmets uh, has an expiration date on it and we're we're going to be approaching that expiration date here in another year or two traditionally in the past we've gone back to the voters on a bond issue and bought 50 or sixty thousand dollars worth of gear for my 30 guys we want to start a new plan kind of like our pagers we used to do the same thing with our pagers we buy 30 new pagers at a time and we buy them every few years we went to a program where we buy four or five a year um, until we get everybody to replenish and stuff. So we want to start the same thing with our turnout gear. Um, probably replacing five or six sets a year until we get everybody replaced. And then it's gonna start all over. By the time we get the new, you know, last guys equipped with new gear, we'll be starting with the guys we first started with, with new gear. So what I'd like to do is get permission to spend, I haven't got all my quotes in on this yet, but I would like to spend up to $20,000 of the 833 money. It's already there. It's not going to come out of budget um, to start replacing five, however many sets we can buy for under $20,000. If y'all are okay with that. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think that's a great plan. You know, we obviously do the same thing with police vehicles and other things in the city to get Make sure those are in rotation or be replaced so we're not replacing everything at the same time. I'm, I'm getting tired of having to go back to my citizens every few years and say, hey, I need all this money. And this is something we're still going to probably have to do, maybe on a smaller scale this next time. But this is something I think we can get in the rotation. We've got about 20 something thousand coming in this year on 833 money. Hmm. So it's pretty much going to be a wash. So if we can keep that up every year, we won't lose any money in our 833 account and uh, we can get everybody equipped, but it's gonna be a four or five year process to get everybody done. Right. I think that's a good concept. Do, do we, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a motion to uh, do that. Do we have a second? Second. A second from Mr. Ware. All in favor? Uh, uh, I vote. I abstained. Mr. Wakefield is- that, That's all I have. All right, any, anybody have any questions for Chief? All right, we'll move on. Uh, next up is uh, the report from Mr. Pointer, who has been chasing bears for two days. Scroungy looking bears. <laughs> Chief, I hope you got your short report. So, uh, I think I probably should be able to get through this in about 25 minutes. <laughs> short um, 
as the mayor mentioned about the bear, I'm sure you've seen on social media or the news, uh, there was a, a small uh, bear running around town the last week or so. Uh, it was apprehended by uh, the Game and Fish. Uh, we, we assisted the Game and Fish in doing that. So uh, the bear has been removed from the city. So uh, the, it's kind of the, the July 3rd fireworks show went very well for us. Um, I had concerns about it and, and I, I was concerned about the park being packed and I was wrong. Uh, there was very few people in the park and, and even throughout town, they, there was a lot of people, but they all seemed to be social distancing themselves very well. And, and so uh, that's a attaboy for the citizens. Uh, coming up, uh, just so y'all know, on, on July the 28th from noon till 6 here in this building is the Boots and Badges. Uh, y'all need to, since the fire chief didn't mention that, then y'all need to vote for the police on that. <laughs> so, and, and free antibody testing. Yes, and they, are, uh, they will also be doing the, the COVID-19 antibody testing as a part of that. So uh, the organizer for the, the Blood uh, Institute has said they're the ones they've had so far have they've had record-breaking numbers. So they are encouraging everyone to uh, make an appointment, and you can do that online, or you can do it by uh, calling Randy Mom's office. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, that's because the firemen cheat, though. So. I know, uh, I know John's asked for this to be on uh, the August study session, but just very briefly, uh, because of the, uh, the mayor's mandate on the mask going into effect Monday, uh, I'm just gonna very briefly uh, kind of tell you my approach to this. I'm sorry? The governor's. The go I'm sorry, the governor's uh, mandate. Uh, so this, this is kind of like the the ordinance he was putting out that that um, he was telling cities cities that they can adopt, uh, but there is enforcement on this. However, the for enforcement is not really enforcement. Uh, this encourages the city um, or law enforcement uh, to enforce it. It doesn't say that we have to. It encourages them to. Uh, and there's, there's several different um, restrictions on that as far as first time being a warning. Uh, and then also a law enforcement officer can't detain, arrest, or confine someone in jail for violating the order. Uh, but this, and it includes this in here, that this shall not prohibit law enforcement officers or local officials from enforcing trespassing laws for private business owners. So. If, if someone's in Walmart not wearing a mask and Walmart doesn't want them there wearing a mask, then we can, they, they can ask them to leave. And, and if they fail to do that, then we can remove them from the property, whether that's telling them to leave or arresting them and taking them to jail. Uh, so that's kind of going to be our approach from the beginning, uh, starting Monday, is we're not going to go out and look for these violations. But if a business owner calls, and we have, they have someone there uh, and, and they want them wearing a mask, then we will either, uh, they will either put on a mask or, or they can ask them to leave. So just briefly on that, that's kind of our, gonna be our plan. And that's all I have, unless you'll have questions. Any questions? <clears throat> Court's back, going pretty decent. Uh, Court is going. Um, it's it's been running uh, normally about 50% of the people that's on the docket have been showing up uh, so it's still uh, I, I don't see the court picking up and catching up with where it was projected to be uh, and and I don't do the revenue you know the for the court that you know was transferred to the mayor at the beginning of the year so as far as the revenue I don't know where that's at but uh, we've, we've Still following uh, the guidelines of the Arkansas Supreme Court while holding court and 
and that takes about three or four officers to do that so every week we have three or four officers tied up for an hour or two for court so anyway and and, I, and i'm going to since you asked that question i also want to make sure that um, uh, the council knows i continue to get lots of compliments on our um, court personnel in the police department and chief pointer and how we are conducting business and how all that's taking place and um so again it's it's uh sure makes my job a lot easier knowing that those guys are doing such a great job and, and we appreciate Thank that you. very much any other questions Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thanks. All right. Um, up next, Mr. Yardley, Public Works, Water Street. All right. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciate you waiving the competitive bidding so that we can get the uh, the sewer main repair that's uh, been a trouble for us. So, thank you for doing that. Um, just uh, really wanted to, you've got a report there. The, the, the only thing I wanted to highlight was that the, uh, the upcoming sidewalk construction project uh, will have a bid opening on August the 5th at 2 p.m. in the city council room. And um, as you've already been told before, that uh, includes Column Lane, Maple Shade, and a portion of Rudy Road, as well as uh, North Mountain Grove, uh, near Column Lane and uh, East Main Street near the Boys and Girls Club. So those are the projects that will be included in that. And um, uh, we'll have a, um, um, after that bid opening, I'll, I'll, I'll try to send you all the information on how that came out. And uh, as you know, that's a grant uh, project. So uh, the biggest portion of it will be paid for by uh, the state and the, the remainder will be paid for by the city. And, and at this point, um, we're projecting um, for, for the grant portion of that, which is just Column, Maple, and Rudy, the city's participation in that is about $100,000. Uh, but the stuff that's on Mountain Grove and, and Main Street are 100% city projects, so those won't be, those won't be funded. And, um, and I'm going to just keep this short. Unless you all have any questions, um, that's all I was going to share with you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, planning, uh, buddy, you'll be back next week. I will tell you, however, because we had a question in our study session about the um, uh, stormwater prevention plan. I think, uh, John, you asked about that. Um, the uh, plan was actually filed uh, last year, 2019. It still has some continuation that needs to uh, be done with that. Uh, and uh, I'll get an update from Buddy on exactly where we are when he comes back. But, but that has been filed. Um, I, and yeah, so I think part of the plan, Mark, you might correct me if I'm wrong, but included some public outreach and some other things. I was just curious how COVID was impacting that, that process. Or that, that's what we need to get with Buddy on okay. uh, when he gets back. Yeah. Um, and he'll be he'll be back next week and and that's the top of the list we've we've already discussed it and, and uh, we'll get after it um, parks we have um, Cristello Park you might start seeing some uh, equipment showing up tomorrow they're going to have to go down and um, brush hog some area uh, of the park and do some testing do some digs uh, there um, uh, it's a go on construction so they should start actually uh, working on the park first part of next week is the plan um, we uh, we did have a little bit of a hold up with paperwork coming back from the state but we were able to get that this week and um, uh, I, you know we kind of got to a point to where I wasn't comfortable moving forward because um, there were some things that we were missing from the state and I uh, was just going to feel a lot more comfortable having those before we moved on and uh, we have those so we're good to go with Cristello Park. Um, the uh, bathrooms at, uh, at the building here on the outside, uh, I haven't been around to look at them yet but we were having the door frames uh, uh, fixed. Uh, we had some vandalism over here and, uh, and so if they're not fixed yet they will be very soon but I think they may be fixed. 
um, which is, will be nice. Those will be back in service. Uh, we had a, a baseball tournament over the weekend. Again, this is something that's kind of, uh, I think, exciting for our city that um, this is another partnership between the city and the stool, uh, school district and um, uh, some other individuals that are running the baseball fields. Um, the state tournament was in town. It went off without a hitch. It was perfect. Um, they uh, followed all the guidelines set forth by the uh, AD, uh, ADH and, uh, and the governor. Um, people had a great time. We had no issues, no problems. Uh, we had some Alma teams that actually uh, did really well in the tournament too. So that was pretty exciting. And we're looking for more of that. Um, it's, uh, to me, I, I uh, love the idea that we can see these kinds of events coming back into our city. And um, with that is some good tax revenue. And uh, hopefully that'll be beneficial to our businesses as well. Um, we're about two weeks away from having the, the papers uh, ready to go, all of the prelim preliminary documents that we need for the uh, bike trails uh, to get those submitted to the state. Progressive Trail Design's been working on those, working on the design for the crossings that we're gonna need. And um, they, you know, the heat kind of slowed things down a little bit. And, and one of the crossings, um, um, there were some issues with, with what was originally proposed back in 2017 to what uh, is really feasible. And so um, they're working on that, but uh, the, the last communication I had with them was they, uh, they were gonna have uh, all the paperwork ready to go here within the next couple of weeks. Um, again, exciting because now then we can get that to the state and once we get okay with them to move forward, we can get that out to bid. And, uh, and then from there, hopefully um, it wouldn't, I think we're looking at about eight to 10 weeks on the actual trail build. So if we can just get it out to bid, you know, get it going, we'll, we'll be good. Um, and that's uh, pretty much it on uh, the parks. That's all I have. Anybody have any questions? We're good. Oh, Popeye Park. Uh, one other thing, Popeye Park, we were having a problem with the, um, uh, with the, the water system over there, the irrigation system. And so uh, we've had somebody come in, they've reworked the irrigation. We, we you know, the, the heads weren't coming up over the, the bushes. The bushes had grown up tall enough now, uh, the boxwoods, that it was just spraying straight into the boxwoods, which uh, isn't good because it will disease them. And, and we had some that were starting to uh, look, a little, look a little sick and grass wasn't growing like it was. And uh, we had heads that weren't even working. So we, we have all that fixed. They've redesigned the, the system. They've actually uh, ran some irrigation now to the, the potted plants that are around there. So, um, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, we have a lot of investment in that park. We want to keep it looking nice. And, uh, and so anyway, we're just about finished with, uh, with that project also. All right, we'll move on. Um, general fund. Everyone has a copy of the financial report. This is through the month of June. Um, if you look at the balance ledger, uh, actually not in too bad a shape. We, um, we have a nice cushion so far for, for this year. Um, the state has revised its forecast again and uh, to the better. Right now, it doesn't look like things were going to hit and, and be as impactful as what we were fearful of back in March. And, uh, you know, at that time, I, I came to you and, and I told you that, you know, the projections for us weren't, weren't good. Um, now, that doesn't mean that even though it's looking better, that doesn't mean that we, we still don't have some issues. And we, somebody asked about the courts a while ago, and, I, and everybody should have. Uh, the latest courts uh, document in front of you and to date for this year we're um, $83,927 roughly 28 you round up um, that is $75,832 less than where we were this time last year so we we have lost over $75,000 to date uh, in the courts now the good news to that is, is that this current period was actually about $1,000 more than what 
it was this time last year. So June of 2019, that report was $1,000 less than what June of 2020 was. So what I'm saying is, is maybe now we, we are gonna be back on track to where we thought we were gonna be. Um, and, and if that 